This video is part two of a two-part video about Kodak Aerochrome. If you missed part one, it's not requisite viewing for this video, but it is an interesting video that goes into the surprising origin story of the film, who created it, why it was created, and I think it's worth watching. But in this video, in part two, what I'm going to try and do is emulate the look of Kodak Aerochrome film digitally, because Spoiler if you haven't watched part one, but Kodak Aerochrome film is unfortunately no longer being manufactured. Kodak discontinued it back in 2009. So I'm going to try and emulate it two ways. One will be by shooting actual infrared images, and the second will be stylizing non-infrared images using Lightroom presets and profiles. Good to see you, as always. My name is Todd Domini. Before we jump in and start looking at images, I want to take a moment and describe the setup so that you have a better understanding of what it is that you're looking at and how the images were created. My test images were captured using this tiny little Canon PowerShot. Now, this isn't just a normal Canon PowerShot. This is a PowerShot that has been converted to a full spectrum camera by a company named Kalari Vision. Full spectrum means that the digital sensor inside of this camera is sensitive to all wavelengths of light, not just the, the narrow uh, visible wavelengths of light, but the invisible wavelengths of light as well. So this camera can see infrared light just like Kodak Aerochrome. But in order to get the specific style and look of Aerochrome where the infrared light that is coming into the camera is stylized to appear pink and crimson red and magenta, just like Aerochrome, we need to use a filter on the front of the camera. And for that, I'm going to be using an IR Chrome filter, also made by Kalari Vision. Then for the second image, we need one that does not include infrared light. In other words, just a normal digital image. Now, as I said earlier, this camera has been converted to full spectrum. It's no longer a normal digital camera, but we can make it normal again by attaching this filter onto the front. This is called a hot mirror filter. You get a normal digital image and it's no longer infrared. So the nice thing about this is that then we will have a one-to-one -one comparison of the exact same scene. One that's shot with infrared, one that includes infrared light, and one that does not. Now there is one more piece to the puzzle. In order to digitally manipulate that second image using infrared presets and profiles for Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, we need a raw image. We don't have to have a raw image. I mean, we could um, manipulate a JPEG, but as you know, it's always better to have um, just raw digital data because that's what those presets and profiles are designed to be used with. Well, believe it or not, there is a way to shoot raw with a PowerShot using software called CHDK, which is an acronym for Canon Hack Development Kit. CHDK is not made by Canon. It is definitely not endorsed by Canon. It's kind of like use at your own risk pirate software that you can download and, and install on older Canon cameras to unlock all kinds of capabilities on the camera. Okay, that was admittedly a rather long introduction, but I felt some context was needed so that you can uh, understand what's going on and what we're looking at here in Photoshop. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at some images. All right, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop. Now, I just wanna put a quick asterisk on here and let you know that these are not uh, like portfolio quality images. These are just test shots that I created for the purposes of this video, as evidenced by the fact that you know, I mean, we have these people that kind of came in over here and, and uh, decided to sit down. This first image here is a JPEG straight out of camera with the IR Chrome filter attached. In other words, this is a true infrared image. And I mean, as you can see, I mean, with this tree right here in the center of the image, I mean, it's just fantastic with these, these bright colors, these brightly saturated colors. So now let's take a look at the raw version of the hot mirror image. And I mean, I just have to say, this is so crazy to me that you can actually capture raw files um, on a little power shot like this. I mean, don't expect like super high quality like you would get with a higher end mirrorless or DSLR or something. Just take a look at the detail in this tree here. And this is the raw version. And I'll flip back to the JPEG. 
I mean, look at how much detail is lost uh, when the camera converts that sensor data into a JPEG. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Again, this is raw and this is JPEG here. And you can definitely see that there's detail happening in the shadows here. I mean, there's definitely some uh, loss of image quality because this is like an unsupported thing. I mean, there are no camera profiles. There's no lens corrections. There's none of that. So you are going to get some vignette. You are going to get some distortion in the image, but you can fix those things using the uh, sliders in camera raw or Lightroom. All right, so let's take a look at this raw image processed using the Aerochrome camera profiles made by really nice images. And by the way, I've pre-selected my favorite one here, which is Aerochrome 14, of which there are 18 included in this pack. So let me just show you all the ones that are included in here so you get a sense of how the image changes with each one. And as you can see, I mean, when I step through these, there are, you know, different ways of skewing those greens and yellows so that, you know, they appear, you know, maybe pink or purple in one, maybe they're more muted and desaturated in other ones. And, you know, again, these are just different flavors, different interpretations. There again is 14, which I happen to, again, really like, um, and so on. So there are, you know, 18 in total for you to be working with. Now let's take a look at another example. And by the way, this image here is going to illustrate very effectively a key difference between shooting actual infrared images and processing an image to appear infrared. So the first version of the shot here that you're looking at here, this is shot uh, straight, out of, straight out of camera, JPEG infrared with the IR Chrome filter attached. And I mean, just, I mean, the color in this tree is just, absolutely amazing. I mean, just really, really wild color. Here is the raw version with the hot mirror filter attached. So now again, using this raw image, I then converted it to uh, Aerochrome using the really nice images uh, profile. This is again, number 14, which is my favorite from the other pack. And I'm going to go through all the different flavors. I just picked 14 because uh, I happen to like the look of it the most. Now, here is the key difference. Here's the thing that I want to point out. Let me just go back to uh, this image here. Now check this out. If we zoom in here in the lower right, see this? Here's this little like green tent that has popped up here. And the green looks pretty similar to all the other green around it. But watch what happens when we look at the infrared version. See what happened? It's not changed. Even though the hue of this tent is very similar to everything around it, its color does not change. And actually, when come in here and look at here, there's some like green trash cans over here. Those have not been changed either. The only thing that has changed, the only um, hues that have been shifted in this image is anything that is living, anything that has chloroplast in it, which is reflecting that infrared light, which explains why the tree changes color, but the tent does not. The Aerochrome profile I mean, it doesn't know the difference between the two. All it's able to see is a particular color. It just, you know, targets a particular hue and it skews that hue um, towards something which emulates infrared, but it doesn't know the difference between a living tree and a tent and a green tent that's on the ground. It's not able to differentiate the two. So is that a knock against emulating infrared using a preset? I don't think so. Let me show you another example. So this version here, this is an actual infrared image with the IR Chrome filter attached. And then this version here was shot using the hot mirror filter and then processed using the Aerochrome camera profile. Now, this is really where the, subject, where the subjective nature of this comes in because yes, this first one is true infrared. It, it is more authentic in that sense. But then this image is not authentic, but I don't know. I mean, me personally, looking at the difference between the two, I, I kind of prefer the emulated version because it's bolder. It has more, more of that look that I kind of wanted out of the shot compared to the original because the original, I think this was getting towards late in the day and the light wasn't as reflective off of the trees and the colors were starting to get more dull and a little more muted. But the preset, it doesn't care about that. I mean, it just targets those colors and blows them out, you know, as if they were brightly illuminated by the sun.
So after doing all this, the main takeaway here, the main thing that I learned from doing this is the fact that there is no like one true way of emulating Aerochrome. I mean, the only true way is to shoot with actual Aerochrome, which obviously is no longer with us. So at this point, it's all subjective. A lot of it comes up to interpretation. I think of the two between, you know, comparing shooting actual infrared compared to a camera profile, shooting actual infrared with a camera that's designed to do so is the closest way to get that particular look of Aerochrome. If that's your goal, and if that's what you're trying to achieve, something that's more authentic, then using an actual camera to do so is definitely the way to go. If however, you're like most people and you simply want to convert your existing digital images or the images that you've yet to take, and you don't want to be you know, acquiring a camera and you know, getting filters and all that kind of stuff, a preset or a profile like the ones from Really Nice Images are certainly a much more uh, direct way of doing it. It really comes down to what it is that you're trying to achieve creatively and how how exact you're trying to be and how closely you're trying to emulate that look of Aerochrome. Hope you enjoyed the video. By the way, if you haven't already done so, be sure to go back and watch part one if you haven't done so already. If you're interested to learn more about the backstory of Aerochrome, it really is such a fascinating story. And I think that video in particular is, uh, is, is one of my favorite videos that I've created here on this channel so far. So definitely take uh, a few minutes and go check that out. If you enjoyed the video, please show your appreciation by giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please remember to subscribe to this channel as well. Doing both of those things will help bring more exposure to this video and other videos on my channel. Will help improve the channel, will help grow the channel, rising tide lifts all boats, that kind of thing. Um, it really does help and I would greatly appreciate it. That's it for me, everyone. I will see you next week.